So we're looking at 5.5 today, which is independent events, and that's on pages 354 to 363. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of odds and probability. And our lesson objectives, to learn what was meant by the concept of independent events, and number two, to be able to solve independent event questions. So independent events are events in which the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another. So examples, flipping a coin seven to uh, five times, sorry, um, whether or not you got a tails or a head on the first time has no effect on what you're going to get the next time. All those events are independent. Winning a, a seven-game series in the Stanley Cup playoffs, it actually doesn't matter how you played the last game. Um, the results, you still have a 50-50 chance every time that you play a game, either you're going to win it or lose it. So those are events that are independent. Some might argue with uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs example, but hey, that's probability. Uh, the probabilities of independent events are multiplied together. So the probability of A and B and C occurring is just going to be the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B multiplied by the probability of C. If you have 10 events occurring, I mean, just multiply all those probabilities together. So our first example is, what is the probability that when flipping a coin and rolling a die, that you will roll a number divisible by three and flip a head? So it, these events are independent. One does not um, have any effect on the other. So the probability of rolling a number divisible by three and a head would be, well, there's only two numbers out of six when you roll a dice that are divisible by three, that's three and six. And if you flip a head, that's a one in two chance. So you have two in 12 chances or a one in six chance that if you were to roll a die and, and flip a coin both at the same time, you're gonna roll a, a number divisible by three, so a three or a six, and um, flip a head at the same time. So if you have a one in six chance of winning a prize on Tim Hortons Roll Up the Rim to Win contest, what is the probability that of six people participating, so if six, six people in, in a room drinking that coffee, at least one person will win a prize? So automatically, you might think that that's just going to be a one in six chance, but it's actually a lot better than that because of this, this at least one person. So the probability of at least one person winning is actually the opposite of um, nobody winning. So if it's the opposite of nobody winning, then we take our one minus the probability of no one winning. So probably at least one person winning is one minus the probability of no one winning at all. Well, if you have a one in six chance of winning Tim Hortons Roll Up the Rim to win, that means you have a five in six chance of not winning or losing that contest. So since we have a five and six chance and there's six people and each of those people have a five and six chance, that's just gonna be five and six, six different times. So we just write that as five over six raised to the sixth power. So when we're done, we get one minus 0 0.335, and that gives us 0 0.665. So you actually have a 66.5% chance that if there's six people in a room drinking that coffee, that one of them, at least one person, is gonna win a prize. Now, that's a lot better than a one in six chance, which is about 17%. So the, the key thing here is being able to know um, what the opposite of what you're trying to find actually is because sometimes it's going to be easier to find out the probability in this case of no one winning and then just subtracting that from one. At Aberdeen Fun Night, 400 tickets are sold for two prizes, a barbecue and an iPad. After the draw for the barbecue occurs, the ticket is replaced before the draw for the iPad takes place. If you buy five tickets, what's the probability that you're going to win at least one of those prizes? So the probability of winning the barbecue, you have a five in 400 chance because of the five tickets you bought. That's a one in 80. You have the same chance to win the iPad. Now, if we're looking for winning at least one of those prizes, remember when we see at least, you might wanna do the one minus the, the probability of not winning. The probability of winning at least one is equal to one minus the probability of winning nothing. So we need to find the probability of winning nothing. Well, if we have a one in 80 chance of winning both those things, that means we have a 79 in 80 chance of not winning those things. And since those are two events and they're independent, we actually get one minus 79 over 80 times 79 over 80. Because um, we multiply them because these two events are independent. And when it's all said and done, and you multiply these together and subtract it from one, you get a 2.5% chance. So you bought five tickets out of 400, you have a 2.5% chance that you're gonna win at least one of those prizes. 
So in summary, independent events are events in which the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another. So the probability that event A and B and C are all going to occur is just those probabilities multiplied together. And when you see the phrase at least, it'll probably be easier to use this concept, that the probability of A bar, now this just means the probability of something not happening is equal to 1 minus the probability of something happening. And likewise, the probability of something happening is equal to 1 minus the probability that's not going to happen. So your assignment is on pages 360 to 363. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.